welcome to Queue Up. I'm at Second Harvest here in Spokane with director Rod Weaver. Hi, Brenda. I want to thank you so much for giving us a chance to tour this uh, huge facility we will see shortly. Well, you're welcome. We're looking forward to it. Uh, Second Harvest now for the Inland Northwest is really a uh, part of a much larger national group, isn't it? That is correct. We're actually part of a network of 209 mm -hmm. agencies across the United States that are in the efforts of feeding hungry people. Um, but for us here in Spokane, Second Harvest Inland Northwest, um, mm -hmm. we service the whole Inland Northwest right here in the, from Spokane. And how many counties does that encompass? We cover 21 counties in eastern mm -hmm. Washington mm -hmm. and five counties in north Idaho. So we have a 51,000 <laughs> square mile radius area, pretty large. That is very large. And it has undergone uh, a couple name changes, hasn't it? Second Harvest is a fairly new name? Yeah, um, it is. Yeah, we have, you know, we were founded back in 1971. We've mm -hmm. been here in Spokane since 1970. And so over the years, you know, we've had Spokane Food Bank and Spokane mm -hmm. Food Bank of the Inland Northwest. But about four years ago, we changed to Second Harvest Inland Northwest. We do see it a lot around the area because you have like Tom's Turkey Drive for Thanksgiving. And um, we'll continue to talk about some of the support and the partnerships. But how many agencies? do you deal with? Well, right here in Spokane County, we um, service 150 agencies alone. But when we look at our mm -hmm. whole service area, we have about nearly 350 partners that we work with. And these can range from your neighborhood food mm -hmm. bank to a meal center, senior and youth programs, and a rehabilitation center. So basically, any nonprofit agency that either distributes food or puts a meal together, mm -hmm. likely we, we help service them. Well, because you have such a really beautiful and large facility, we're going to continue out there to mm -hmm. give the folks a chance to really see how what a large scope you are faced with. Okay. <laughs> about the agencies that are supported. Now I'm familiar with United Way and a lot of the umbrella agencies under the United Way. These are groups then that depend on Second Harvest, right? Correct, yeah. They, they come to Second Harvest and, they, and pick up their orders or in some mm -hmm. cases the agencies will we deliver right to them mm -hmm. and these are these nonprofit partners are help fighting hungry. Like I say they can uh -huh. be a food bank, they can be a meal center, um, just a variety throughout our service area. Okay and that's that's how they start getting distributed out locally. Correct. And then, of course, like you said, there's other counties even then that are supported as well. Absolutely. So how many millions of pounds of food? I believe you mentioned that. We right did. Here. You know, last year in 2006, we distributed 13.3 million pounds of food. It's a lot of food. That's a lot of food. It is, and uh, nearly 50% of that was perishable food. Mm -hmm. Five million pounds alone was produce food, and we're going to take a look at that in a little bit here, and about another million pounds was dairy and frozen products. And over the last well, about three to four mm -hmm. years, the trend has been where we're starting to distribute more and more of the perishable type of food. And that's Which, just because efficiencies in the food industry is mm -hmm. making it really hard to get that non-perishable food. That can of corn is harder, getting harder to resource, that box of cereal. So mm. we had to look to different avenues. So perishable food is a good thing. Well, and you were talking about it too earlier. Perishable foods are typically the fruits and the vegetables, which are, are really the healthy ones, but present a challenge for traveling and getting them to people fast enough before they spoil? And Absolutely. You know, we can get a call from a grower and they might say, hey, you know what, I've got a load of peaches here you can come mm -hmm. and pick up. And so by the time we pick those up and bring them in, and we need to start distributing them very quickly because they do mm -hmm. have a short shelf life. And like you say, nutritionally, <laughs> it's a great benefit to put that on someone's table. Definitely. You know? uh, and but we're yeah. looking at just going through this vast warehouse, which is encouraging. It really is to see you know that and yet there's some shelves that need to be filled aren't there, there are yes yeah, so our inventory uh -huh. is a little bit down right now so we've got a, a little bit of shelf definitely to, to fill now who helps fill these shelves well we've got a lot of great partners um, that help us to resource food you know we're very resource driven mm -hmm. in where we get our food so we reach out to retail partners grocery mm -hmm. stores um, growers packers um, shippers and producers and just manufacturers of food um, so we, we reach out mm -hmm. right into the food industry. Anybody that really puts food together, distributes mm -hmm. it, um, we try to make partners with them. And it looks like you do have quite a few nice partners we in Spokane. Do. We have a lot of great partners mm -hmm. right here in our Spokane area. 
What kind of other donations do you take besides the food? I would suppose money. Money's needed for the fuel and, and, and to pay a staff to help run the... It, it does. As you can imagine, you know, an 85,000 square foot facility here, there's a lot of, you know, energy costs for a large cooler and freezer mm -hmm. um, to keep a, a fleet, excuse me, a fleet of 14 <laughs> vehicles running. There's a lot uh -huh. of fuel and freight charges. So, you know, those donations really help that we can get from individuals. And for mm -hmm. each dollar that people donate, we can turn that into six pounds of donated food so it's, it's a good that's thing. a good that's a very good thing we're going to look at the cooler because I understand you benefited from a, a grant from the state we did absolutely. so let's go take a peek inside okay cold huh? a little bit <laughs> it'll be cold <laughs> We're standing outside a very huge cooler, you were telling me. Uh, what, 192,000? Yeah, <laughs> our cubic feet here is 192,000, and that's cooler and refrigeration. Mm -hmm. um, we Prior to the expansion, we had 92,000 cubic, which is great, but mm -hmm. with all the perishable food that we we're resourcing and increasing, we needed yeah. to double our uh -huh. space. We needed to increase the, the room here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, in 2006, um, due largely in part to a state appropriation grant from the state of Washington, we were able to double our space to 192,000, so it's really Excellent. nice. Excellent. Good. Well, I'm, I'm sure they they're uh, feeling that this is being put to really good use too. <laughs> Absolutely, yep. Yeah. I know they thought it was a very good use of the money, so mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. We wanted to talk a little bit more about the recipients. Um, uh, mostly families in the area, of, of homes or yeah. nursing homes or anything, you know, what What's the gamut of, of who's receiving? What we see, about each week, about 48,000 people visit a neighborhood food bank or meal center in mm -hmm. our service area. Now that about f nearly 40% are children under the age of 18. Mm -hmm. Another 11% are seniors. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see about 50%, you know, are coming fit in those are, two yeah, categories uh -huh. there. And you know, the stories we hear are different reasons why people end up on the line of a food bank line. Mm -hmm. You know, for seniors, you know, they have to make tough choices between do I use this money to buy the you know prescription drugs that I need right. to get by, uh -huh. or am I going to use it for food? Well, I've they need that, that medicine, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so to have their food bank to turn to is you know helps them out a lot. And for a, a lot of our clients, you know, some of them are single moms, you know, with mm -hmm. children, and they're you know part of the working poor. They're balancing a job and trying to raise a family at the same time, but they just don't have enough to stretch that food budget. Do they have to qualify in any way, or can they just show up? They can show up um, to their neighborhood food bank. Mm -hmm. Um, and they can basically, you know, they need to have a picture ID and um, just a proof of their residence. Um, and it's just a qualification based on their need of food. Oh, so that's excellent. No red tape, no no having no. to go through some bureaucracy just in, in no. times of need, especially, like you said, single moms, I know. I've, I've been there, done that with three kids. Yeah. And believe me, the macaroni and the peanut butter and jelly only go so far. Right, absolutely. Uh, now, um, the kids get uh, school lunches a lot of times subsidized but you made a very good point I wanted to stress for volunteers here too that realize that summertime is, is a rough time for some of the kids at home right it is I think many times people think that hunger is you know a, a tough time in the winter time you know because mm -hmm. it's cold it's a seasonal thing and that's true but in the summertime the, the need is just as great because mm -hmm. those kids that are at school um, in the school season getting one to two subsidized meals well in the summertime uh -huh. when they're now at home taxing the cupboards right. um, and uh -huh. you know people the donations are down a little bit then because people mm -hmm. aren't thinking about hunger and that it's a real need in the summertime That's a good point. Uh -huh. so it is definitely yeah. you know 365 mm -hmm. days of the year and especially as much especially in the winter the during kids, the summer right. and yeah. then especially if you have a garden and you have excess mm -hmm. you know it's so nice to pass on this fresh abundance it is, and we've yeah. got a lot of people that, you know, grow their garden and they have a lot of excess produce, they can bring that into Second Harvest or even their mm -hmm. neighborhood food bank, and we love to take those types of donations. We're going to see some of your volunteers, and we're going to allow you to see also how you might become a part of a Second Harvest.